Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, what we're going to do in this lecture, I'll show you how to use Visual St uh, Studio to uh, create a database in your website and be able to use some of the controls available in Visual Studio. So we have a website. In this website, we have a few pages. We have the index page, and it's just a dummy page, a dummy website. It doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just except for uh, explaining to you the database. In this web page, we have city. We have a city uh, form for cities. We have customer form, and then we have customer list. And in a different page, I'll show you uh, different uh, controls that we're going to use in the uh, in this project. Later on, as we advance, I'll show you how to do the login and how to do register and so forth. Okay. But let's start with the database. So that's what we have. Uh, you can download this project from the link that was provided on the, on the YouTube video. So if we go to the Visual Studio, here's my Visual Studio, here's my project. If you look at the Solution Explorer, these are my, these are my uh, forms, and I have uh, a folder that cont uh, contains images. Because uh, part of this video, I'll show you how to link the images with your database, all right? The first thing you need to do is that when you create a project, an empty project, and the way you create an empty pro website, you just cl click on add uh, a new website, okay? Or if you wanna work with me, you download this one. Uh, we have right to click in here and you, click, uh, you add a new item, add a new item, you see that? When you click on add new item, you have a list of things that you uh, and one of them is what? One of them is SQL database server, okay? And that's what you need to add into your project. So you select that, you select that, and then you give it a name. Then the name, it depends on your website, okay? So it depends on what you're trying to do on your website, but you need to give it a name that is meaningful, all right? Otherwise, if you just say database MDF, it might, people might not understand what this database contains. So, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now, okay? Or you can just say customer's database, right? So you just change it to customer's database. And then you click on add. Now, you will get a dialog box. This is a warning, it's not really an error. So most people, when they see this, they think it's an error, but you need to read it a little bit carefully and see what it's doing. It's saying that, Usually a database is stored in a folder called add data. You don't have that folder in your website. Do you want to create it? And you just simply click on yes, and then it will create the folder. So now I have a folder, a new folder here, and it has the database in it. Now, typically you will have, in general, you have what you have the toolbar showing here, toolbox. But because we added a database, you need to look at the other tab, which is called SQL uh, Server Explorer. And when you click on the Server Explorer, it will give you the database that we just created. Now, let's say this is not showing. How do you show it? You just simply go to under view here, and then select, for example, you'll say Server Explorer here, and then we'll be able to see it, all right? Otherwise, even if you close this here, Server Explorer here, and then you double click on the database, it would open it up here too for you, all right? Now in the database, databases are, I mean, are you all aware, databases, main, the main content of database is tables. Tables is where you store information in it, all right? That's, where, that's what the term database is, that we store information somewhere, all right, in a table. Now you have additional things. For example, you have views and you have stored procedures. Those are common too. Views are like queries, like you would do, like if you want to say, I want to only look at customers that lives in Dubai, for example, or customers that lives in Sharjah, or customers. So you can create a view only for those type of customers, all right? Same thing with the stored procedure. Stored procedure is that actually you can actually do some programming on the database. We're not going to cover this. I'm explaining it to you so you understand what you can do with it, all right? So now, for the database, all you have to do is that you right click on this and say, right click, add what? A new table. So when you click on new table, I'm gonna make this bigger. What you get is that you get uh, like uh, 
uh, I would call it a database panel where you can design your database. You can actually create your tables. So at the bottom part is that it'll give you what is the SQL command would look like. And if you're not familiar with SQL, SQL is structured query language where you can write a, a script to access the database like insert, update, delete, to add to the database, right? But I don't need to know all of that here. Actually, Visual Studio does a lot of that for you, all right? All you do is that you go under design, you design it, and then it's done, all right? So the first thing I wanna do is that here's my table name. You can change that table name to whatever table we want. So I have, in this, remember in the website, we have cities and customer. I'm gonna create a city table. So I'm gonna say cities, all right? I change the name to cities. Now, the other thing you need to do is that you need to add your fields. The first field, every table should have what we call a primary key, a key that makes, each, uh, makes a record unique. And we have some, when you create a table, it'll give you that key automatically, it's called ID. Now, there's two ways to, to deal with this key. Either you actually do what, you can make it automatic, so, it, create a unique ID for you every time you add a new record, or you can manually change it. If you do manually uh, maintain it, it'll be a problem for you. So better to make it auto increment. How do we make it auto increment? Just like any controls in Visual Studio, each field here has actually a property. So when you click, select on this and then click on properties here, you'll see what? You will see that you have one of the thing here is called identity specification when you click on the plus it says false here what you can do you can say simply change that to true now it will give you one it will give you two values one is your starting point which is identity C you start with one and every time you add a new record you add one to it so you start with one the next time two three four and so forth all right so we're done with that, you hit enter. Now this would be automatic, auto increment. Every time I add a record, it will increase, add it, add it dramatically. So I wanna add the cities, okay? So I have a sit, list of cities. So you can say here, for example, the city name. Now sometimes you can put city code, like a short abbreviation, or just the city name. So for example, if I wanna add, few, uh, I'd add a, a field called, for example, city name, And then I'll make it varchar. Varchar is what, it's a character. And this is the one that I use. There are a lot more fields in here. If you look at the, the, uh, the fields available, you have int big integer, you have binary, you have char, only character, you have date, date time, date time two. So you have a lot, okay, but for this, and we have float and decimal. But for this example, we're using varchar 50, means that I'm gonna, record strings, uh, store strings in it, okay? That's all I have in this field. An ID and a city name, all right? And then when you're done, what you do is that you say, update the database, okay? To actually update the tables. So what you get is that you get a script, you say update, and if everything is okay, you get this green check mark here. That means it worked, it worked. Now this table might not appear right away in here, it did in this case, okay? Sometimes it doesn't, it takes time to appear in here. So if it doesn't appear right away, what do you do? You click on this refresh circle here. When you click refresh, it will have the fields, all right? So that is the, how we create a database, how we create table. Now what else we can do with this? You can actually add data to this table. How do you add data to this table? You right click and do what you add. Uh, you see that show data table? You click on show data table and then you can put your fields in here. All right, let me add a couple fields in here. So put charge up for example, hit enter. Uh, now, did we not do that? It must be. All right, we got a problem here. Let me just fix it and see what the problem is. 
all right. So we found an error, and it's a good practice because you know how to fix that error. So what you do is that, let's say we have an error here. So you hit escape to exit the screen. I'm going to close it. And I can click on the table again. Do you see this here? It says actually bar binary. It's not var char. So we're trying to store binary in it. So what I need to do is change that to what? Var char 50. All right. And then hit OK. Now you need to do update the database. Otherwise, if you don't update it, it's still the same record. OK, update database. And now, if you go back, let's see if it is actually var char. Yeah, it is. Close it just to make sure it is var char. So what you do is that you click on it, click on that field again, that table again, and it is var char now. So you're fine. All right, now we can go back and add, and then add records. So show table data, and we will say charge here. Dubai, Azman, and then you can add the rest. So notice every time you add a record, what happens? It actually added one to that number. So that guarantees that you have a unique identifier. All right, so in the next part, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create another table. Okay, how do we create another table? We do the same process again. Okay, what you do, I'm gonna right click, and then add a new table. And this table is going to be customers. I'm going to not explain. I mean, we can stop here. I'm going to pause the video until we edit, put all the record and explain these, uh, all the fields and I'll explain these fields for you. OK, I'm just going to pause the video for a minute. OK, so we actually created this table, and uh, the customer table, and we added these fields. Customer name, customer phone, customer address city and the image now i made all these var char now the uh, when you're naming your field name make sure that you don't put uh, spaces between the field names for example cust and no space name the reason i do that is that it might give you problems later on so you typically you make sure that you don't have spaces in the field names now the field customer image will use it to link it to an image file in the website so what we usually do is that you can store it as a binary data, but it'd be better if you store it as, as a link to an external file, all right? And that's what we are doing with this one here. All right, so when you're ready to execute it, all you need to do is that you just simply update the database, and then we will have two tables. All right, so it's a green, so we're done, we're okay. So now I have, I should have two tables in here. Again, if you, they're not, if they don't appear, like I told you, what you do is that you just simply refresh. Now you have the customer table and then you have the uh, city tables, all right? So that is what you do to start with. Typically when you're designing your website or when you're designing a website, you need to determine what tables, what information you need to store. And that is your first step you decide, decide on the tables and if there's any relationship in these tables. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, stop this video and in the next video I'll show you how we use the controls over these tables, all right?